I'm going to go through a concrete example now of how we use the bracket notation, or what's called Dirac notation, to actually do some quantum mechanics. So the first system we're looking at in this class is the stern gerlach experiment, so thinking about spin one-half particles. So a question we might ask is what is the probability of measuring spin up? So that's going to be plus h bar over 2. And you have to initially have your particles prepared in some sort of state, or we're going to call that psi. So our input state is a ket, and we're just going to call it right now a general ket psi. So psi is kind of our favorite Greek letter when it comes to quantum mechanics, and it being in this ket is again expressing it in a certain vector space, and this is our initial state, the initial quantum mechanical system we have. We then want to know, well, what is the probability that we measure spin up? Notice that this is our bra vector. So this is now in our bra vector space. So ket space, bra space, two different vector spaces. So to calculate probability, we smoosh them together. We'll talk about how you actually do that. And then you take the magnitude squared. Now magnitude in this case is important because we have complex numbers. So when we have something here, like magnitude x squared, what you have to do is take your complex conjugate and then multiply that by the value itself. So don't forget that we are dealing with complex numbers here. So what does this look like? Well, we need to express our initial state in a basis which is going to make this work easiest. And we want to use the basis that relates to what our output state is. And so again, it's not literally the same vector space, but in this case, since this is going to be the z, we're going to express our input state in the spin one-half z basis. So what that's going to look like is some value times spin up in the z basis plus spin down. Now, something that's key here is that this must be normalized. And if it's normalized, that gives us a certain constraint on A and B. If our psi ket is not normalized, then this isn't going to work out. So what happens? Let's just not actually specify what A and B are right now, but just assume that it's normalized. And let's see what happens. So my probability, we expect to get a number between 0 and 1. And so the first thing that I have is that spin up state bra. Now I'm going to draw my bracket and re-express my ket in terms of the basis vectors. And again, that A is a scalar, that B is also a scalar. And these can be complex scalars, so keep in mind that it's not necessarily just an integer or even a real number. And square. So one common mistake I see students make is that they drop the magnitude or they drop the square. So don't do that. So now we can think about the properties of our vector spaces. And again, here we're not actually working with vectors in, in a matrix formalism yet. That's going to come later. We are just knowing that these are vectors in a vector space. So what we can do here is actually distribute. And we can, in fact, also then pull um, these scalars out. So I have now this bracket of plus with plus, and then I have this bracket of plus with minus. And again, all I've done is, is pulled the scalars out front and then distributed this. Now, we have to actually define what these things mean. And this is where we go back to the idea of having basis vectors with certain properties. And we are using these orthonormal uh, vectors such that when you have a plus with a plus, and again, these are both spin up in the z direction, and these are technically two different vector spaces, but they're related, this is going to equal 1. And another way to think about this is that if you start with spin up, you measure spin up. Right, that our probability if your input is the same as your output is 1. If you have down with down, that also equals 1. So this is again very, very helpful. But then if you have these 
kind of crossed, opposite basis vectors, you get zero. If you start initially with a spin down state, you're not going to measure spin up. And if you start with spin up, you're not going to measure spin down. So these are the rules. And hopefully this isn't too difficult to memorize, but we then can come back here and we see that this is just going to equal one and this is going to equal zero. So we're using these properties. And in fact, even as we use more complicated quantum systems where we have more basis vectors or we even have much more complicated um, systems, that there's still usually very simple rules like this when you're working in bracket notation. And so now what we see is because this whole term is zero, we don't have to worry about it, and we're left with A magnitude squared. And so again, how we would write this is a complex conjugate A. You wouldn't want to um, just square A, for instance, if it was I to begin with. So this is what we get. Now, again, uh, something to keep in mind is what's a scalar and what's going to be a, a vector. And in fact, these sorts of objects, this bra with a cat, gives you a scalar. So again, we're not here um, working with the same vector spaces, what we're going to see is that this is actually an adjoint space. So when we're working with like a vector formalism with actual um, matrix type entries, that this is going to be your row, this is going to be a column. So hopefully that this is clear. Again, right now this is really general, but I find that when we first introduce this, students don't know why we're using this, and it's really to be able to do these types of calculations.